Hey guys, so today we're going to let you in on a little secret and show you how we capture the high resolution video and screenshots on the LPC. The LPC being this, the large pixel collider, uh, which we built with help from Digital Storm, and we like to consider irresponsibly powerful. We also have one of our monitors, which is a ViewSonic VP2770 LED, uh, 2560 by 1440. And we actually have three of these, so when we span them, uh, that's like, uh, what, like 5,000, 20, 2560 times three? No, it's more than that. 6,000? No, it's more than that. 7860 by 1440, something like that's that? That's it. So that's a lot of pixels, that's more than 4K, and we're capturing video on that, which is not an easy task. It's a lot of pixels to capture. So when we're capturing video, we'll use one or even three of the ViewSonic monitors, but when I do screenshots, I actually use a smaller Dell UltraSharp monitor that's like 19 inches, it's a 1080p display, and I'll talk more about the technique I use for that in a minute, downsampling, but basically it's useful to have a smaller, lower resolution monitor for doing those kind of screenshots. So whether we're doing video capture or capturing screenshots, we like to use a program called DxTory, which is about $35, and it's pretty similar to Fraps. Um, which people are probably pretty familiar with. Uh, it does lossless video capture. It can capture at any resolution, which is exactly what we need. And the biggest hurdle we face capturing video is just the performance dip that you get maintaining a steady frame rate. Yeah, for example, last time I was capturing footage from Road 2 Total War, which is a really system intensive game, trying to run fraps while having a big battle in that game just utterly tanked the frame rate. But when I was using Dextry, I was able to maintain like a solid 20 to 30 frames per second while recording, which is pretty good for Road 2. Yeah, and I mean, we should say we do like Fraps and we still use it uh, for a lot of things. Uh, they have different advantages. You can capture on the desktop in Fraps. Yeah, and that can be useful sometimes, especially when we're trying to get old games uh, captured. And, uh, you know, in general, you're never, you're always going to have a performance loss when using software to capture. DxStory does a really good job of minimizing that loss, so that's why we prefer it for capturing something like Titanfall um, or Battlefield 4. Uh, which was really tricky, and Rome, of course. So here are our DX Story settings. Uh, and when, when we capture video for the LPC, we want it to be really high quality. So we actually use this Lagerith lossless codec, which you can download for free. We'll put a link in the description of this video. And this is a really, really fast codec. It uses multi-threading, uh, which is great. And it's faster than some other lossless codecs. So that's key to keep the X-Story from putting a big dent in our frame rate. But it produces some massive files. Um, for example, uh, sometimes we'll capture video at 7680 by 1440. Uh, just one frame of that uncompressed video can be up to 30 megabytes. So three seconds of Titanfall footage here comes out to 238 megabytes, which it's pretty big for three seconds. You can imagine we're filling up four terabytes pretty fast when we're capturing 30 to 40 minutes of each game that we're going to make a video of. So that's how we do video. And now I want to talk about a tech another technique we use called downsampling. And this is the magic you use to take really high-res screenshots, right? Exactly. So with downsampling, you're basically rendering the image of your game at a way higher resolution than you normally would. If you have a 1080p monitor, normally you just run it at the native resolution 1080p. With downsampling, you're trying to run it at up to like 2160p, and then you're compressing that image down to the native resolution of your monitor. And it's a really brute force method of anti-aliasing to get rid of all the jaggies, but it's also a way that you can take high-res screenshots. So how do you set it up? I'll show you. The first guide to downsampling popped up on the Guru 3D forums a couple years ago, but I actually like to refer to a guide uh, that's on the gaming forum, NeoGAF. One of their members there put together a really good, just simple, intuitive guide to getting downsampling working on NVIDIA cards. Unfortunately, it's a lot harder to do downsampling on an AMD GPU, and this is probably a good time to mention that downsampling is kind of a finicky process. You're setting up a custom resolution that your monitor isn't really designed for, so a lot of times when you're trying to enable these custom resolutions, you'll get like a black screen where your monitor can't accept the input you're giving it. You have to back out. Every once in a while, you might have to restart Windows to kind of get back to your normal settings. People always caution you against possibly doing some kind of damage to your hardware. I've never damaged anything doing ah, downsampling. Like metal it is finicky. You might have to reset or at worst like boot into safe mode sometimes. And getting it to work can really depend on your combination of 
the GPU you have and the cable you're using to connect to your computer and the monitor you have. So for this we're using a 1080p Dell monitor with a dual link DVI cable going into an NVIDIA, NVIDIA Titan. And setting up downsampling on the NVIDIA card is actually really easy assuming you have the right kind of mysterious combination of hardware and, and everything to make it work. So to start with your downsampling setup, just go into the NVIDIA control panel and click Customize and Resolution, and then Create a Custom Resolution. And here you get to put in the values for the downsampling resolution you want to try. And you can do kind of any resolution you want as long as it's proper, you know, 16 by 9 or 1610 for your display. But we went all the way up to 3840 by 2160, which is basically going quad res on 1920 by 1080. So if you go to the NeoGAF thread that we put a link to in the description, you can see some good kind of advanced settings for your monitor timings uh, that you'll have to set manually depending on the resolution you use. And then you can test that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the 3840 by 2160 resolution that I created. So when you switch the resolution, it looks like this. Everything gets really tiny and if, of course at first you're looking at it and you're kind of squinting at your desktop and it barely, you can barely tell what you're seeing, but it actually works in game really well because you're run, rendering the game at that native resolution instead of at you know, four times the resolution of your monitor, so it looks much better. So that's how we capture video and screenshots on the LPC. And if you want to see some of those videos and those screenshots, you can go to lpc.pcgamer.com and just pcgamer.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like this video if you like Tyler. Now this video is not going to get uh, any likes, Wes. So we'll see you next time.